Hello, uh, welcome back to Blender Sushi. Today, live noting will cover a topic on um, Boolean in Spreadshock. So, <clears throat> as we know already, um, Blender has a quite a powerful Boolean operations. If we have like a, like a plane like that, and we could actually slice this box using this plane as simple as that if we um, <clears throat> the way to make it work is to make sure that we have thickness on this plane um, let's quickly give it a demo so boolean and this is a slicer object plane um, yeah, boolean has three kind of process but the one that I'm interested today is the difference um, however the the difference will work um, for what I'm trying to do is basically creating a tool to do the slicing inside Virtual. Just a simple one, not too complicated. So if we add a thickness to plane using Solidify, we can actually kind of slicing this object right there, the cube. And luckily, inside Spreadshop, we are we actually have the Solidify and the Boolean CSG Boolean operations built in, so we can have like a multiple cut things like that. Um, Solidify. If we have array, I believe we have array, and kind of slightly offset it. We could have like a two slices. So this kind of thing, I, I I'm trying to do um, you could do it using array up to a certain extent um, let me quickly apply this scale and so we still have the effects this is I'm trying to do it manually if, if, if I'm not using this virtual just a, like a quick demo quickly I'm gonna use the empty as the offset and let's rotate the empty and let's have a couple of array probably there's a limit on how this would actually work but I guess two will still work and if I apply yeah actually Maybe just one, okay? But this is I'm I'm showing to you. Um, if we just have one and we hit apply, the resulting object is gonna be that, and we can separate by loose part, and that's a cube being sliced into two using the plane. That's kind of thing we're gonna do using the virtual, but maybe there's a little bit more to it. Let's have a look. Um. I want to point out this video by Nikita. This is actually Nikita or Nikitron. He brings in, uh, he's the one who started Sverchok. And he has some video, uh, really useful video covering Sverchok. I actually haven't, I didn't realize until the other day. And then, hey, he has, he has some really, really useful um, Sverchok video tutorial. He And he will take you through to um, um, areas that um, like a detailed area and then the uh, concepts that many video is not showing like a uh, kind of like a even the first part is interesting how when he's doing slicing on a sphere um, I'm, I'm gonna use one of uh, his trick actually uh, with the slicing that's a uh, gonna be for our boolean operations inside Spreadshop. so let's quit safari let's do it from inside Spreadshop. compositing we could start with a yeah we can start with this default cube um, let's go to Spreadshop. let's bring in the default cube objects in get selection so we get the cube and a few nodes pure draw um, and we can see the, the result right there 
if you have happen to have the cube over there and you already rotate it, you didn't hit apply, um, which means you haven't applied the matrix. Uh, if you have the objects like that, or maybe a reset rotations, but you have it scaled and then you move it to the side, you see it's not updating inside Spreadshop because you need to apply the matrix inside Spreadshop. Like this is applying the transformations. Now it's gonna be doing it correctly. So and Spreadshop will update it when you scrub. So that's a uh, something important. You need to apply the transform if you move the objects from the center. Okay, that's all right. Um, let's save this real quick. This is Spreadshop um, CSG um, Boolean slicing. All right. So the next thing I will do is um. Let's try using, we have a plane operations, we have a plane object in Spreadshop, and let's stretch up plane, let's give it a give it different color, um, yep, scale it, oh okay, the plane is actually like that, so, just gonna do it like that. With a plane, I, I think we need to probably center the plane. I'm gonna use, I guess, matrix apply. Matrix in. Location is the vector. I'm gonna offset it slightly. <coughs> Gonna increase the size and then offset it slightly like that. So it's slicing our box. Okay. And now let's uh, do a boolean operations. Um, I might need to solidify first, just like uh, we did it in the modifier. So we need a little bit of thickness, it's gonna help with a boolean. Plug that in and plug that in. That's our plane. It's gonna be our slicer. And this is our object. Let's boolean it. CSG boolean. And of course we have intersect, join and difference. <coughs> Let's bring that guy, that guy, and this, and that. Let's hopefully we are getting the result. This is just a the basic. Yep, so the pink color is the result, you see? Because of the thickness, we if, we, if, if I bake this, we're gonna have the, the cube. And if I separate loose, I'm getting that guy being separated. There's um apparently there's an extra bit there, which is interesting. Maybe we need to join it somehow. I didn't think of that earlier. I didn't really plan this, but yeah, that's the basic idea. We are gonna do it with a slicer uh, because I want to do like a multiple slice. Like uh, this is an object, and I want to have multiple slice like that. I'm gonna use um, spare chopped um, cylinder. Let's uh, let's hide our cube for now. This guy and create a cylinder. The cylinder is um, just a basic cylinder. If I just preview it, so it's a it's normal cylinder, but of course this is more powerful and more procedural. You can change it at any time as long you didn't bake. Anything you do in SketchUp will remain live. 
and you can turn cylinder into like a cone maybe um, it's not a pipe but this is still pretty powerful is you can create a subdivision and yeah adjusting the, the vertices resolutions of the cylinder and adjusting the height like that in fact if you zero zero out the height you might you, you might get something like spider web which is which is really handy actually if you have if you want to make like circle of circle of circle you can actually just use the cylinder in fact I just if, we, I, if I just make it like that and yeah that's like spider like a spider web right there automatic you just need to randomize it but what I want to show you this is like uh, something that Nikita showed in his video if you use cylinder with a UV connection you're gonna get you can get a really interesting result really really quickly let's have a look this is the UV connect is super useful it's just um, uh, I wish that every package has this UV connect let's see if I try edges uh, slice on slide off cut on separate I uh, just use a polygon oh actually there's edges there see that's even that's that makes a nice uh, design what we really want is the that look you see this like a um, little bit like Christmas tree you can adjust the radius bottom and radius top as we know if we have just four vertices it's like it's almost like a like a pyramid you just need to find out how to add the gap there um edges slice maybe there's a cycle yeah there are all kind of, all kind of options you can play around with what i'm interested in is just this if i just do it like that so it's a size 3x3 three three. this is gonna slice the box it's really handy you can adjust the subdivisions let's try with a uh, 4 slicing save new file this um yeah um here if, if I back it out and this is gonna be just a single object like that yeah that's really handy and then we can now add a solidify for our slicing <clears throat> so vertices goes into vertices polygon into polygon thickness um, 0 0.0 okay that's solidify is happening bake just single objects and then of course with that ready we can slice our box display our box different color for the box okay that's our cylinder right there maybe we want to adjust the cylinders location this uh, might be okay we need to separate it Mm, apply metrics. Um, yeah, apply metrics. This guy. Metrics in. <coughs> Vector in. And then in there. Interesting. Interestingly, it doesn't seems to like. Yep, that's very interesting. Maybe, maybe it's just the relationship of this cylinder and UV connects and solidify that we shouldn't break. But if we plug it in like that, we can do that. So my this guy cylinder and UV connects must be um, special. You know, the data structure that's 
from here with separate caps and all the options are totally related so I managed to offset the slicer maybe reduce the slicer thickness 0 0.02 so we don't see the gap too much and let's see if this work it's just a box boolean csd boolean so this and that guy slice using this and that guy what's the results gonna be it's a uh, let's hopefully this work and operation is gonna be different and let's bake it there you go that's our slice object yeah okay, there we can see the gap uh, it's almost like a um, UTS building in Sydney it's a University of Technology of Sydney it's, it has building that's really really simple it's almost like that we can separate this object by separate by loose part and then they are all, all have the pivot point at the center at the same location the original objects if we want to do a little bit more um, we should center pivot set origin to geometry now we can do more looks like okay maybe the operations inside stretch up is different slightly different from the one here we probably have extra objects there doesn't matter let's uh maybe we can do something with that using animation nodes gonna do something real quick um with with objects that's not in the center like that um we want to kind of have like initial positions so I'm gonna do that. This is this is animation nodes tab. We can get the current transform, and now its object knows its origin position. If I go to animation nodes just for fun, um, I'm gonna use this uh, power node. It's a funny node. Get selected objects. This is like a live node. Um, with a selected object, we can do something really, really, really quick. Object transform output. Let's say with location X and Y, we don't, we're not going to do anything with the Z. Plug in the objects. And of course, it jumps. It doesn't know the initial position. We need to tell it using the ID, object ID, and then get the initial position initial transform get that object plug in the location now we have it back at the original position um, we could randomize the position random vector use a vector mask Randomize the seed, the scale. Looks like still kind of moving. Oh no, it's not moving in the Z, but there's a extra, there's extra bit there that we don't really want. Just need to be careful with the CSG in the stretch up, I guess. And the inside is actually hollow. That's all right. You could probably rotate it and etc. etc. We see, but the effect is live. Right, that's a bit of fun we can do with animation nodes. Mm. 
yeah, I guess that's pretty much what I want to show it, show you. Um, let's see if we can do something a little bit more here. So let's cut all these CSG operations. Save it, save as new version. So we have the, the slicer here. Maybe we can separate loose part. That should be that guy, uh, and that should go there. Um, the separate loose can be slow, but it's better than nothing. This is, actually is pretty fast already. If I bake this, we have now four different slicers. They are not a single object anymore. Uh, did I accidentally delete the cube? I might have accidentally deleted the cube in the in the scene. It's gonna create the cube once more and then reload it. Cube, cube one. Scale the cube. Refresh. Okay, all good. I'll make sure that I I don't delete it. So I'm gonna do it like that. So what's next? So we have our cylinder. Maybe I could use the matrix and randomize the rotation. Doesn't seem to recognize the original position. Doesn't matter, let's try it. Vector and then count four but in there angle angle float range float float 60 maybe yes that seems to work see this this is the thing with Sverchov really um if you understand this data structure in Spreadshop really really well with the list split and list repeat and all the sort of stuff you can have these kind of uh, factorizations and that's a 4, 4, 4 is good, that means 4 objects and 4 different transform goes in and we get that result um, we could probably uh, slice the boolean there's one thing that I always want to do is kind of maybe maybe animation nodes or stretch of both of them cannot really do that it's kind of like a recursive recursive thing um, let me uh, let me try baking this guy and baking this guy so what we got is that the boolean in blender is powerful but if, if of course if you, if you are a little bit too crazy and just doing it like this it's not gonna work but if we uh, if we slice it one by one like that boolean and then get the difference and then okay that's a, a little bit tricky so what is this guy that's a SV SV3 SV3 SV2 SV1, SV, maybe call this SV4. That's a SV0, 3, 3, 4. Okay, so 0 is going to be sliced using SV. Boolean difference, SV1, apply. What's going to happen? We get that slice because SV1, delete SV1. Next, Boolean difference sv2 apply sv2 is this guy delete and then boolean again difference sv3 apply which sv3 is uh, this guy delete and then this guy 
boolean again difference as before apply we can delete this guy so this being sliced multiple times we can separate loose we can set the origin to center set origin to geometry and with the blender on boolean modifier if we are careful we can get a beautiful slice object like that it's solid you know we have the inside as well it's almost like for fracturing although it's not a Voronoi but that's really good that's really cool that's kind of what I wanted to do is um, maybe it's called recursive this is a programming terminology I think both AN and Spreadshell cannot do recursive maybe it can um, I have to ask the developers I believe it cannot do that it cannot do everything like step by step kind of I kind of wish it can like for example we have an object like that and let's say like a pick random face pick random face maybe this face okay maybe extrude it randomly okay next it's gonna it's gonna do it for this guy and then pick another face and maybe this guy and then random and then extrude it and then next gonna do it for this guy pick a random face and then extrude it and so on and so on that's a recursive with a with a scripting with a python scripting if you know programming that's a recursive is a it's really it's, a, it's really the thing that's powerful thing you can do with programming so in this case we have that slicers I don't know, probably this is not gonna work. I'm just gonna try it. Matrix apply this apply to that and then join let's join this might crash might not we'll see. So if I beg, this is a single object. Kind of wanna join all these four together really. Maybe CSG Boolean can do it. But this is working for for two objects. Again, here we have another example where um we, here is we need two inputs but then we have four objects and then I want to join them one by one there's also another recursive things that you might it's better you better do do it using programming but yeah if I bake this and it, you you see this is like single objects but they are all still separate of ob, separate object separate they're loose they're separate if we join them using boolean one by one and we can get a, a single slicer that could work with our cube uh, yeah well I guess I'm gonna do that next time so this is a um, kind of like a homework for us for for me actually this slicer won't work um, you have to do it recursively you know like this is the original object and you slice it like that that's one time and then do it again and do it again and again and again if we can do that inside Spreadshop or animation nodes um, that's gonna be fantastic although one thing that uh, might work is uh, if we bake uh, if we bake each time so kind of See how a spread chalk will update for each frame. Maybe the next frame can take the result of frame one, and then the next frame can take result from frame two, and then so on and so on. That's gonna be that's my work. Um, anyway, I'm gonna ask the developers and see if we can do that.
for now yeah just if you're doing slicing just like that that's uh, easy to do okay um, hopefully you like this video tutorial you can leave comments if you have questions and leave a like and then subscribe to the channel um, I'll see you in the next video of live noting uh, thank you very much